Today, we're going to talk about the three programming languages when it comes to data science and big data analytics. Now, we have talked a lot about Python, Python, yeah. Python, Python, you know, mm. and, uh, we, but we haven't talked a bit about the other kind of programming language, right? Now, Python is uh, a popular language, and uh, Dr. Lau, can you tell us why it's so popular and why is it important? Okay, maybe to refresh your memory a little bit, uh, Ruben, you have, you have been, you know, attending the talks and stuff. So, what is what's Python? Well, how do you feel about Python when you first hear it? Like, is it just a programming language? Is it hard to learn? Or you, you've seen some of those codes before, right? Right. Yeah, right. yeah. So as a, as a digital marketer or as a, as a layman, how do you see Python? I see Python as a, a very versatile programming language. Uh -huh. And uh, that day when you show me through the, the screencast yeah, uh, yeah. The, 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 on the screen, uh, if you really look at it, it's quite easy to un actually understand. It's quite logical in a way. Yeah. It's not very far from the English language. English. Right, so that's Python for me. Yeah, so Ruben sums it up very well as, as, a, as a data scientist. So many of the data scientists or who, uh, who wants to enter data science, they might not come from a technical background. And even if you are a technical person who has written programs before, you might not have written it in, in Python. Chances are that you have write, wrote it in uh, you know, C Sharp, Java, PHP, or even JavaScript, for example. So Python is a good and user-friendly, beginner-friendly programming language to start with. And not, not only that, it's free and open source. Free open source. Free, free and open source, meaning that uh, and you have a strong and solid community that's constantly updating mm -hmm. and then giving out bugs reports. And yeah, if you ask questions on forums or Stack Overflow, you can always get results or response almost instantly as long as your questions are, are not that you know extremely hard. So it works on like Mac, Windows, Windows yeah. and even the Raspberry Pi. Ra and even Raspberry Pi and also Linux. Linux as well. Yeah, and also Linux. So yeah, as long as the, the platform, they have a runtime environment or engine for Python okay. and then the, your Python code can run on it basically. And do you need a very powerful uh, computer to do it? Uh, actually no. So that's the good and the bad side of Python as well. So Python usually just need a very basic computer with let's say 4 gig of RAM and if you imagine how, how, how powerful is the processor on the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> can't yeah. be that much. Right? Yeah, it can't be that much, right? So it, it, can, it can literally run on yeah. Uh, very bare bone setup machine because it's not really graphical intensive. Right. But also that is be, uh, that's why Python is not usually used for uh, things like three D programming or three D design or graphical user user interface programs. Right, right. And, and we're going to show this uh, little. Yeah, that's right. Here. So uh, in in this chart, you also see that uh, Python itself uh, is useful for data science because it has a lot of numerical data analysis packages and all the way goes to machine learning as well. So it has a very complete uh, data science uh, ecosystem, I would say. So what are the cons or the downside to Python? Okay, so usually when, when it comes to programming language, there's not really a, a downside or, or cons per se, right? There's no negative impact if you pick that language, except sometimes you really can't really do the task that you need to. So I would say the weakness of Python, like I mentioned earlier, is that it's not that powerful when it comes to graphic intensive stuff. So when it comes to rendering or 3Ds or even like uh, native application, if you want to write native Windows uh, programs or write mm -hmm. mobile applications, then Python is not the language. But if you're doing data science, then you don't need to do all of that, right? No, no. When, you, when we're doing data science, we don't have to do all that. And we can even, uh, because it's, it's quite strong in mm. web programming, so you can use it to publish uh, the results using uh, web API. So that's very useful, right? Yes, yes, uh, that's right. Using Django framework. So, so tell us, you know, what kind of companies use uh, Python? So one good thing about Python is that it's so flexible so that it can fit in different environments. So for example, at Grab, right? Grab original program is written in, in all sorts of different languages and their current core is written in Go language because of the functional programming. But they can, you can also, they're hiring Python engineers or Python programmers actually. So like I said, you can write Python programs and export the results to the database and then they can take the results from there and use it. And also uh, companies like Uber or any companies that that they're doing a lot of uh, intensive uh, real-time data science calculations. They will use that to do a lot of modeling for them. Mm. Okay, so we're going to talk about the next language after we come back. Uh, 
I love this course. Uh, I love uh, everything about it. So uh, I love the instructors was uh, very um, helpful. The teaching materials was very um, informative and very. Um, it basically covers everything that we need to know in order for us to uh, kickstart our uh, um, yeah data science career. All right, welcome back. So now we're going to talk about R, right? R for Ruben, but this is R. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so the R programming language. What is it and uh, you know, why, why we use it? Okay, so uh, whenever we talk about data science, apart from Python, people also ask, what about R? R itself is a very uh, strong language in statistical analysis, mm -hmm. and it's very good for generating charts and visualization. So it's a very advanced analytical and statistical programming language too. Yeah, and similar to Python, R is also open source and you can run R on different platforms as well, Mac, Windows, and also Linux. The processing is also near about the same in Python? Near or? about the same. So uh, the only difference is that, uh, speaking from experience, I'm, we are coming from someone who writes programs. So when it comes to R, the syntax is a bit... Uh, weird, I would say, so non-intuitive. So it happens to us a couple of times that you wrote the program and then after a couple of months of you know, Chinese New Year holidays, or you, you took a summer break, then you come back. It take, takes a while <laughs> to refresh your memory, but why did I write it this way? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, because R is designed mainly by statisticians and uh, academicians. So yeah, the way the the way that the language and the syntax is a bit different. Mm. Mm. I also understand that R is not so. Um, strong when it comes to web programming yeah so r is not your, your number one choice when it comes to, to web programming so if you need to use r for processing then you have to write the data back to the database mm -hmm. or they have, you have to find other ways to speak to the existing system so that you can use the results right okay mm. so for our viewers or people who are looking to get a job in data science um, in your experience when yep. you look at job descriptions on you know the job job street or job markets and all that. Yep. Uh, do companies want people who knows Python, R or both? Um, so most of the companies, if they have a reasonable size of let's say five, ten people of the data science team, right, they don't really mind whether you are using Python or R. Unless you are working in a company that's relatively small and they have a uh, you know, requirements that you need to use uh, either of the language, but usually that, that hardly happens. And in academics at universities, then they probably, uh, when you look for applied mathematicians or applied statisticians, then they will require you to know R. Uh, but usually what you see in the JD is uh, you need to know either one of them, knowing both is a plus point, something like that. But big, big companies, let's say you talk about Microsoft, Facebook, Airbnb, they, they use R really intensively in their analytical process as well. So yeah, uh, especially like, like my case, when I hire, uh, let's say, uh, applied mathematicians, they, they already know R, so there's no point to, to force them to learn how to use Python. For, there, there's no strong reason for us to do that. Yeah. So if you're already strong in R, you just continue using R. Yeah, that's right. And uh, to be honest, if, if you're someone coming from Python background or R background, the, the packages or the way that the packages are used in Python and R are, are pretty similar. So for example, if you're using, um, let's say, decision tree or logistic regression, you just need to find the corresponding package and learn a bit of the syntax to apply. Then the way that we train the models, the way that we set up the parameters are pretty much the same. Yeah, okay. It's a pretty straightforward process. So uh, a data scientist who is uh, strong in Python and a data scientist who is strong in R, they can speak together. Yes. Right, they can work together. Yeah, they can work together. In, in okay. They won't fight. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen people fighting in the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, okay, I'm going to go to the third programming language mm, okay. uh, and that's SQL. Yep. Alright, so I, I know that SQL is something very important as well for data scientists, yep. a very important skill. And why is that? And what is SQL? Now, to be, to be politically correct, mm. uh, SQL is not really a programming language. It's more like a scripting language. So the full name of SQL is, is pronounced as SQL. Okay, it's a structured query language. So it's a language for us to mainly uh, run queries. Okay, on our database. So for example, you have a MySQL, you have Microsoft SQL, you want to talk to the database, you want to run some CRUD, create, retrieve, update, delete uh, actions on the database, then you need SQL. 
Right. Yeah, you need a script to execute those functions. Even though you, you, you may argue that, you know, I can use um, a tool or graphical user interface tools, but those tools is just to help you to construct the query. Eventually, everything is still translate into SQL before it's executed on the database. So I will say SQL is the is a must have for data scientists. Yes, uh, especially when you are doing some of the data engineering job, okay. like especially at early stage when you want to retrieve the data and you need to know how to uh, run a select queries, for example, so that you can pull those results that you want. And that's mm -hmm. on the the pre stage, right? And then post stage is after you have run your your modeling, you get the results, and you want to write those results back to the database. Mm -hmm. Then you need to run SQL queries, especially the insert command so okay. that you can write those results back to the database or the tables. Ah, okay. Yeah. So definitely have to go with SQL. Mm. So uh, it's not really a programming language, but it's, it's, it's a scripting language and it's a, it's a query language. So SQL is a, it's a decorative language. So compared to other languages like Python or R, SQL language uh, make sure that you are you understand the the design of the database and the tables very well, mm -hmm. yeah, so that you know what columns to pick, what are the right uh, values to pull, and also what type, what are the right data types to select, and then you can do your data manipulations, project the values, sorting, yeah, etc., and set up conditions as well. Okay, so that's the the three programming language that mm. we are talking about. One is yeah. scripting language, right? Yeah. Now I think we have actually set up another one that we want to talk about yes. a little bit here in this uh, episode of Data Crunch. This is a bit of insurance that we are <laughs> we're buying here. So if you are watching here, you are complaining that no, Doctor Lau, SQL is not a programming language. That I'm going to introduce another programming language called JavaScript. JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. So I think I I talk about JavaScript many times uh, in in public and different talks. JavaScript JavaScript is, is a very important language for both uh, full-stack web developers, mobile developers, and also data scientists because a lot of time uh, data scientists have to produce charts, especially interactive charts. So if you were to produce charts and not, not relying on any of the existing tools like Power BI, Tableau, um, or even Excel, so you have to write uh, charts and display on the form on the web page okay. then you need javascript because mm -hmm. there are a lot of open source javascript libraries that are very handy to use like d3.js high chart and then you can just use javascript to construct the charts by pulling data from the databases display it, and yeah you can, you can basically use it to generate charts and tell interactive and visual appealing stories Mm, okay, so that is the four programming language instead yeah. of three. That three plus uh, one, three plus one yeah, that three we have uh, somehow explained to you. I hope you mm. understand. Um, if questions about the the programming language that we have just uh, mentioned, but one more very important question for mm -hmm. for the viewers. How do we get started in all this? Okay, now uh, the easiest way to get started if you are just mm. trying to, to pick up a programming language to enter data science, then I would say look at Python and R at the same time and see which one speaks to you. Mm. Okay, so you, you look at a couple of the online examples or look at our previous episodes, our blog to get some of the source code. Then you get a feeling about, okay, uh, you, most, most people will find that Python are uh, easy to understand because, it, like you said earlier, it really looks like English and then mm. it really like English, so it helps you to shape your understanding. Uh, if you are not uh, using that, uh, probably in the comment section you can let us know what are the programming language that you have used and how does it help you. Or if you have tried Python or R and you don't like you know, you didn't, neither of them, and then let us know why, and then probably we can give you some guidelines and pointers as well to help you to, to move forward and progress in your data science learning journey. Alright, so let us know in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like our page on Facebook, and um, as always, uh, love to hear your thoughts and also your feedback. Until next time, mm -hmm. thanks. See ya.